Hey guys, this is my run on Dare to Defy Stage 2 on DFF 00 Global. And this run is going to be a somewhat semi budget run with no BTs and no FR weapons. The centerpiece to this party setup is actually Sync, who was also released on this event and gets synergy boost. I really wanted to use Sync because I recently prepared a 5 over 5 unique ultimate weapon, mainly in anticipation of Shalota. And I was quite happy to see that Sync also uses the unique ultimate weapon. The biggest drawback Sync really has is that her skills are low turn rate, meaning that she has a tendency to delay herself every time she attacks. And this is where Rem comes in. Rem helps to solve this issue because she can easily swap her turns for Sync, allowing Sync to act again and again, and also dishing out tremendous amounts of damage. To round off the party, I actually used Freya, and that's really only because she is also synergy on this event, and I thought I might as well just use her here while she gets the synergy boost. If you aren't really going for a budget run and you want a smoother run, Kane is I think overall better than Freya here because he does more damage per Lancet and he also of course has access to BT and FR if you have those weapons. But overall I think Freya does very nicely here because while you are swapping turns between Rem and Sync, at least you still get some spears in with uh, Freya. So a little bit about the strategy before I go to the call abilities because the call abilities also play into the strategy here with this team. The idea really is to delay both bosses with sync all the way until the bosses hit their 100% force time. And it may sound quite difficult because sync is the only delayer here and it can be a little bit tricky but you'll find that with Rem swapping Sync's turn over and over and Sync being able to delay with all her skills, in particular her LD actually delays all enemies by 2 turns, you should actually be able to keep your party's turns ahead of the bosses. To help with this also, this is where I gave Freya the Seed Rain's call, and that's really really as you can see here to turn manipulate so that I can get additional turns in before the bosses can act. If you don't have Seed Rain's call, he really isn't mandatory here, I, I use him here mainly only for the turn manipulation. So alternative here would be some call ability that can delete turns or delay the enemies. And of course one good example for that is either Quistis call or the Amidatalion LD call for turn deletion. Next up, when the bosses hit 79%, they will use an attack called Bubble Breath++ which resets your breath to zero, which really isn't that bad, you can just battery yourself again. But the other thing that it does is it also inflicts turn rate down on all three party members, which also isn't too bad, but I get around that by using a Raijin LD call. So the idea here is to use Raijin LD call before the bosses hit 79%, and that way you won't get inflicted by turn rate down. The Raijin LD call also serves another purpose in that it helps to mitigate the damage when the bosses hit 100% force time and use their force attack. Right here is where you see the first boss hitting 79% and he's using Bubble Breath++ plus plus. but since the Raijin LD call debuff is up on the boss, I don't get debuffed by turn rate down. If you don't have Raijin LD call, it really isn't the end of the world. You can just use another call ability that mitigates HP damage when the bosses go into force time. You can also of course give your party debuff immunity by way of a Lena base call. But end of the day, turn rate down you know, isn't a run ender and neither is the boss's force attack. It actually does pretty low amounts of damage. And you can easily then heal up your team with Rem's Cure or with Freya's attacks or her spears. That being said, at least you know with the Raijin LD call, I get to evade the first turn rate down, I get to negate the first force time attack, 
And while the debuff is up, I also deal a bonus 20% HP damage. So all in all, I think it's really worthwhile to use it. But if you really don't have it, the run should still work with alternative call setups. To round off the call, the last call that I use is the Seymour LD call. And that call actually has a lot of value on this stage. Firstly, both versions of the call, assuming your Seymour is fully built, both versions of the call will inflict his trademark debuffs. And this means that you can have his debuffs up for the entire fight, and that helps you to push damage through to the bosses. The other reason why I use the Seymour LD call is that after the boss enters force time which is about to happen here, they will start using Hydro Shot Plus which actually grants them 2 framed buffs each time they use it. And saving the Seymour LD call for after force time allows you to dispel the buffs that the bosses grant themselves. Finally, in the second half of the fight as you will see later, Using the Seymour LD call does at least some nice damage, but it also helps to delay both bosses by 2 turns and that helps fit into this strategy that I'm using here. Now that the bosses have entered force time, you don't really have to worry too much about them getting turns here. In fact, them entering force time forces them to use Hydro Shot Plus every time they get a turn and Hydro Shot Plus by default doesn't have any HP damage tied to it. It's just a brave attack that grants themselves buffs. There is a little bit of benefit in terms of delaying the boss's steal in that you want to push as much damage as possible so that by the time they exit force time, their health will be significantly lower. So you can see right here that after boss A did Hydro Shot Plus, buffed itself with 5 turns of defense and speed up. And I guess the idea the developers had is that if the bosses are buffed with speed up and you are buffed with turn rate down, it may get a bit dangerous because the bosses will start getting a lot of turns in relation to yours. But anyway, it doesn't really matter. So here I'm just sort of pushing the damage through and hanging on until they exit force time. The only time the bosses get dangerous in force time is if you let them accumulate enough brave because then they'll actually do their generic HP attack to dump their brave and they actually get a 50% boost to HP damage done during force time. But this is really a non-issue with both uh, Freya and Ram in the party. Freya will be able to Lancet or spear every single turn and with all three party members you should be very easily able to break both bosses consistently throughout their force time.
竜騎士をなめるなここじゃ終わらせる。So this is so called the second half of the fight where both bosses have exit force time and during this part of the fight is where you just have to reapply the, the buffs and debuffs so in particular what I like to do is use swap turns on Freya once to give Freya a max grave up buff the other thing right here as you can see is using the Seymour LD call on the second half of the fight which helps to delay both bosses and very nicely dispels the defense up and speed up buff that they they got. At 29%, the bosses will use Bubble Breath plus plus again, which unfortunately at this point you you have to get debuffed by the turn rate down because Raijin's LD call debuff has worn off. But it doesn't matter at this half of the fight because for one thing the turn rate down lasts only three turns. And you can quickly burn through that debuff by using additional abilities. The other way to get around it is to pop summon mode which is what I'll be using soon. So the idea is to just you know, take 2 or 3 turns each inside summon mode and by the time you come out of summon mode, the turn rate down debuff would have gone. I was keeping an eye on a turn order bar here thinking that now I'll just read until the bosses are about to get their turn and then I'll pop summon and it turned out by the time I pop summon the turn rate down debuff has actually worn off on all 3 party members One thing about the turn rate down, it actually does help Freya a little bit because right here as she leapt into the air because she's debuffed by turn rate down it actually takes slightly longer until she descends down again
I popped summon right here because the bosses are above 90% force time and when they hit 100% they will use their force time attack and I was thinking best to just try to push as much damage through inside summon mode before they hit their force time. Right here, I tanked a bubble breath plus 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 their force time attack, and you can see it really doesn't do a lot of damage. And because Freya is in the air, she dodged that attack, which allowed her to get another turn, and she can just leap into the air again. Using her LD right here also just heals off the damage that you have suffered from the force time attack. So that's it for this run, as always I hope the video has been helpful and if you enjoy the content, please leave a like, comment and subscribe, it really helps a lot. Till then I'll see you guys in the next Shinryu fight, bye!